Related to direct student service, um, to and that is $136,000, and those are students that were not in our district previous to this, or were in the district but have had a significant um, increase to the services that they need. And that is so the total needed from the trust is $201,000. The um, teacher for Denton Park here. Do we have any candidates and they declined due to our pay scale? I don't even think we have any candidates. There were no candidates. And then how many students are we talking about in the 136? Um, that is a total. Um, and so we have a line that specific for tuition, um, and this is what this 136 is what our line would now be over. Right, but how many students are we talking about that we do? Is this one kid being placed by the district? Is it no. two kids, three kids? <coughs> I'm just trying to get here's here's where I'm going with this. It's three. It's three. Need a motion. So uh, are any of these expenditures likely to be one time or is it just going to be budgeted for the moment? It'll be budgeted for moving forward. Nice. Any other questions? Thank you. Will we accept the uh, recommendation to pull 201000 from the trust? Second that. Okay. Any other questions? I have a motion uh, to remove 201000 from Special Education Trust. First, I'll ask the public. Anybody from the public wish to uh, make any comments about uh, withdrawing money from the Special Education Trust for these needs? Hi, I'm Mary Kay Lake from Peterborough. Would you stand up, please, so we can see you? Can you tell me what school the second line item is going to, or is it a number no. of schools? No, I cannot. Um, that would be a direct violation of a student's birth rights. We have so it just so you're we have so few students that attend schools outside the, the district, that it, it could very easily become very clear who that child was. So I understand your question, I just, I can't. Any other questions from the public? <coughs> Seeing none, then we have a, a motion that's been moved and seconded. I will, uh, any further discussion? <coughs> The superintendent said that if you would like to have all the schools, you can find a list of all the schools that have those in them if you, if you care for it. Yes, please. Okay. Was that directed at me? Yes. Yes, please. <coughs> just, just a general comment. According to the unofficial records, the Special Education Trust, as of July 1st, had 508,000. <coughs> Take 201 out, it'll leave 307 at the end of this year so one thing we, we all be thinking about is additional funding to schedule the education trust next year because last year the warrant we did not have a warrant article for the special education trust last year yes we'll discuss that 
inspection process. Right. Just like that. What we're talking about. And we do it once. Any other discussion questions? Any other comments? Seeing none. Thank you. Uh, then we'll uh, call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Since we voted and approved that expenditure, then I will uh, call it close to the public hearing. Public hearing is closed. We'll start the regular board meeting with the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Accept the uh, school board minutes for the last meeting. Second. We move and second to accept the minutes. Any discussion, questions, or corrections? Being done, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any extensions? Okay. Points of pride. So we have a couple different points of pride. First of all, Hancock Elementary School had 90% attendance at their open house. Um, FES, not to be outdone by HES, had 95% attendance. Um, also, SMS sponsored a night for parents of students in grades five to introduce the one-to-one -one initiative, and that went really well. And finally, Conval High School collected $594 at Shaw's, a $100 Shaw's gift card, and total, um, in totals of $1,644.57 in donations for tackling hung, yeah, the Tackling Hunger Drive, and 2,300 pounds of food were collected, um, and that was a very, very successful um, Tackling Hunger Drive. So they don't know how to beat it for next year, but they will try. Those are our points. Thank you. This is the point in time where we allow the public to speak to the board if anyone has anything they would like to uh, ask the board or provide the board with information. I have a few minutes to speak to the board. Anyone in the public wish to speak to the board? Seeing none, we'll continue. Consent agenda. So on uh, page 7 and 8 of your packet, uh, there are the conversations. <coughs> Um, there is one revision on page eight. About halfway down, you'll see Stacy Whitaker, uh, our graduation advisor, has been changed to Lisa Pelton. Um, Again, this is for notification. You don't have to approve these. You, you don't have to know what these amounts total to do you by chance. Okay, so we'll have to get that later. Okay. Byron? Yes, Just for my knowledge, what's a campus monitor high school? So that's after for after school. <coughs> okay. After, yes. after school. Okay. The next thing on the agenda is the enrollment report that should also be in your folders.
wind is at 2015? 6 o'clock? We always meet before set. At least until whenever. Until further notice. And November. Okay. So November. You can all see that that Saturday is outlined there. Is there anything that you see missing or needs to be added for the week of November 5th? Um, the week of the 12th, the week of the 19th, and the week of the 26th. It's okay right now. I'm gonna. I'm ordering new equipment. So okay. For that. Thank you. Thank you. So it's time for reports. And uh, Molly yes. is going to give us the student report. Okay. Um, and Molly, I just haven't been here before. Um, so I don't have too much to report on, but student council had a retreat last week, or the week before, and we went over a few things that we think. Um, we might want to see change in uh, Conval. We have not decided on what we're going to bring here yet, um, but that's in the works. And uh, we're also going to get some input from other students, not just in student council. Okay. Thank you, Molly. Thank you very much. Asher, are you here? No teacher rep. No teacher rep. Excuse me. Okay. Budget property, Jim. Yeah, we had a brief discussion of what the new requirements of default budget <coughs> might mean, and there's not really a full that clarity that the state added to that. Um, there is a, I forget the date, but there is a default budget seminar that was posted. Do you have that? Um, I believe like, it's October 9th, but I can look it up if you like. If people would like to attend that, there is an additional. Um, Default budget seminar being hosted by the Panther School Board Association. There's also a default budget at the Concord Law Conference. This is the right. 
Uh, we talked about the solar project, and one of the things that uh, we have a, a local citizens group that's been interested in helping to do a study on that, and we asked the superintendent to take a look at getting a cost for a third party, independent third party study, to take a look at take a look at that. And once we get the cost, we'll come back to the, the board with the recommendation. Um, the high school science project is basically finished. It looks it looks like the total unofficial estimate will be under under budget by over three hundred thousand dollars. Tim Grossi found out uh, last week, I think it was, that the rebate from utility for the installation of energy efficient hardware is significantly higher than we thought. I think that number is like sixteen thousand dollars, eighteen thousand six hundred forty coming back. Uh, we'll probably credit that to the project, but we'll probably have to have the <coughs> property take a look at other energy efficient projects we might want to use it for. Yep. Uh, so uh, the completion of the project was reported in the paper today, uh, and it was reported at, at one point that um, because of the coming under budget, that left money to be used for other small renovation projects. What I think is true, which is that money unexpended from the capital reserve fund will be returned to the capital reserve fund. That, that's, that was the intent. In fact, okay. with, you know, Bob was chairman of the uh, building committee, and we, every time a new opportunity came up to spend more money, we made sure that we kind of mentally thought about okay, this is the project as is originally envisioned, and this is outside of an example of that is some of the doorways. <coughs> I would just comment that we did say that we're very um, sure that anything we spent money on it was within the scope of what the project was. Anything that we had extra money for would have to come back in here and be discussed. I can remember those discussions. And it's, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not a matter of returning the money to the, the fund. It's money that will not be pulled from the fund. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, that's right. So that money will not actually be ever leave the fund and be remain in the fund. And should we, at some future date, have a different project, then we have to go through the normal process before that. That's nice touch. So it thank looks, you. It looks like the project is more than three hundred thousand dollars on our budget. But once we get the official numbers from the superintendent, we'll celebrate. Um, then there was also a very brief discussion on the situation with the Antrim gym. That's about it. I don't know if you've got my email about an individual who might be able to do that third party investigation for us. We'll pick it up. Okay. All right, but did you right. get it? Yes, I did. Okay. All right, just want to make sure. No. Okay. <coughs> just a bunch of property. Thank you, Jim. Communications committee, Nikki. Um, we held a working meeting because um, most members were in another meeting. So Stefan, uh, Kristen, and I worked and reviewed some pieces that we'd already had in the works, um, set up a couple new assignments, and um, decided that we have two meetings in October and two in November. And both of those would be the first meeting would be um, planning, and the second meeting would be a working meeting like we held to get things wrapped up. So that was our plan. What's your sense of how you're doing? Um, I think when we get a little firmer here, it would be better about outputting stuff. Doing okay, merely um, getting information to um, Heather. I was glad that she was able to pull off some of our um, information in the paper. We are working on um, social media, and um, that was one of our big, I think we need to have a bigger presence than we have. Um, but I'm, doing a, I'm going to attend a workshop on the 22nd to learn a little bit of the rules and regulations for school boards when it comes to social media. So we'll see. Thank you. If I can add to that, uh, maybe it wasn't at the last Thursday at the, the Selectman Advisory Committee, we had a discussion and Karen Hatcher did her name right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we had a discussion, and I don't know if it's still John's letter, but we got a, the Selectman Advisory Committee was very interested in coordinating with us 
to go with a combined communication campaign. That'd be great. And Karen actually attended our meeting, right. part of our meeting, and is going to come back when we're all there. All present. Okay. Thank you. Now it's like the advisory committee. John, what are you going to tell us? Well, our primary agenda item was the finding uh, to select to serve with the implementation planning committee for consolidation. Prior to the meeting, I had sent out an email asking for any selectmen who were interested, uh, and not, didn't have to be a SAC representative. Uh, received no response on that. At the meeting, uh, there was no interest in any member of uh, committing themselves to that. And the response was that uh, from what everyone was, they understood from their towns is that the uh, warrant stood no chance of passing and they were not interested in essentially the work were wasting their time. Then we uh, sort of moved on to a different discussion about funding and uh, talked about um, what was happening in Fall Mountain, and uh, it's going to be, that will be the major discussion for SAC uh, this month, is is there something we can look at in, in funding for? Bob, do you have anything you would like to tell us since you're right there? Hey? Yes. Uh, regarding <coughs> this discussion? Or, or building project or anything you want to add to the building project? Uh, in terms of the building project on the science labs, uh, I talked to Tim today and what we're trying to do, Jim doesn't know this yet, nor does Dick, but we're trying to get together on Monday <clears throat> uh, when the kids are away from school and do a final walkthrough. I think we're 98% done and, and I would give you a closing memo on things that will just fall into place subsequent inspections that may take place, but uh, kids are back in there, they're functioning, and we just want to bring closure to it, but we want to make sure we've covered all our components. So hopefully we'll do that on Monday. So the next board meeting will have the closure report, correct? Yes. Okay, great. I'd like to allocate an hour for that. <laughs> an hour for that? <laughs> okay. Thanks, Bob. Linda. Food service. Yeah, we met on Thursday. We talked about a number of things. One, um, bringing a student on to the food service committee. Um, we can wait to follow up on that. We do not have a summer report yet, um, or at least we didn't on Thursday. I really followed up, and I'm not sure if she's received it yet or not, but she did send a number of questions. Service. So we will review that report at our next meeting, provided we receive it. Uh, we talked about the possibility of going out to bid for our food service, and I'm here to ask the board today to give the Food Service Commission, the Committee permission to continue and begin the RFP process working closely with uh, budget property. We set a timeline to send the RFPs in November, responses received in January, um, and decision date for April. At this point, obviously, that's all still squishy. But we'd like your permission to move forward um, and look at beginning the RFP process. Obviously, the RFP would come to you before that's sent out. So, I make a motion. Second. The motion is to uh, allow the uh, food service to start the process of developing the RFP for purposes of food service with the assistance of the budget property committee. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? I have a question. Yes. What is an RFP? Oh, a request for the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any votes? Any abstentions? Okay. That was us in a nutshell. Okay. Thank you. For the old business, First item on the agenda is funding formula discussion. Richard, are you, uh, are 
So I was asked at the last meeting to bring information regarding the Fall Mountain, um, which if you have read Marion's report, that would be unbundling the services. Um, so to kind of walk you through what you have, I'll start with in your packet you have the Fall Mountain Articles of Agreement. And um, beginning on the second page of that agreement, um, it refers to several different methods. So under each method is what is used or what is unbundled using that particular method. So method one applies to these items. Method two applies to these items. And there are six methods in six different groups, and I'll let you review those, um, in order to come up with the funding formula for Fall Mountain. Um, in, additionally, you, what you have in your pocket is also the ADM that was used across, of, across all of the different methods, across all the unbu unbundling and then the data associated with each of those methods. So you can see it is a highly complex methodology or funding formula. And that really does say 3 ninths or 81st, 10 81st, 2 ninths or 81st and 2 ninths for that first method. So, in a nutshell, what they've done is they have decided that these are the costs associated with all of the, all of the, everybody, and then take an ADM um, to figure out how to divide those costs. Um, and then if you look at each of the other methods, they're done similarly at, with different um, with dif different apportionments, if you will. I would try to answer any questions that you have. Um, I may have to reach back out to Fall Mountain to answer your questions because it is, like I said, very very complex. I'm not sure how long it took them to decide what went on what list or was going to be done with which method. But this would be a way to unbundle um, different services. How long did that take? Just a question. Is, is everything just ADM? There's nothing to do with equalized valuation? That is... Um, That was my understanding, but that doesn't make sense to me right now as as you're talking. So, um, oh, oh, oh. There's, there's something on the. So I would have to reach back out because I, I, that it, it, that was how I understood it, but now it doesn't seem to make sense to me. Draws two important distinctions on the basic funding formula and all these methods. One of them is in high school is separate from everything else. Yes. In high school, of course, it's costs that are not allocated by any other method um, on, um, on an ADM basis. Mm -hmm. But capital improvements are on a 50% average
that were taken from the trust fund, if we just happened to be Walpole and it was them, what's that look like? You know what I'm saying? And just, you don't have to give me details, but how does it look? Does the town, is, so, yep. It looks like um, most of the special education costs are in method six, so it would be a portion of that way. I think an interesting part of this is they have an annual review process for this, which is in section nine, where the school administration and the school board actually look at each of these methods and how they're applied and what the percentage of them. So unlike what we have now, it's a fixed formula and becomes kind of a maybe a moving target. Well, it takes two thirds vote to change the articles, so. There are articles as well. That's on page yes, section so nine. nine. So even though they may review them, it takes a vote to change them. Further discussion? Uh, you know, I don't know that Fallmouth was the answer. It was certainly a solution to <laughs> some parts of New Hampshire to solve an issue that they were dealing with. For us, I, I see two parts. Part of, the, uh, part of it is the overall cost of our in the school district. If we change the funding formula, what impact would that have? And we have to look at that on each of the individual towns, depending upon the point of change. But that still doesn't address the overall cost of running the district this size, maintaining all the facilities that we have. So though we could maybe make it more equitable around the cost per town, that would certainly, I believe, make some individuals happy. But it still does not address the overall cost of operating a large operation for the number of schools we have with the population within that school. Uh, so I, I don't know. A movement forward is a movement forward. 
if a change in the funding formula would be something that could be successful across the district, then that's certainly a direction to go in. And from that, maybe we learn more to make decisions later. But to stay status quo, to me, is just the board's not, we can't be responsible if we stay status quo. Some change has to come about. I think it's certainly wouldn't solve any issues. Say again? Add, Dick, that the scenarios were outlined in the financial equity report that Mary published a few years ago. So that's 25, 75, 50, 50, 50. Those variations in the formula are there to review to see what the impact is. So you're right, we can't <coughs> solve everything, every problem with that, but I think. Um, I would, my sense is it's going to be a lot easier to have that conversation than to have a conversation which we we're trying to have about closing to a four, a four school model. And I think we kind of realize we're done with that conversation, I think, for any reasonable chance of it passing. So I think, you know, my personal feeling is we this would be the only discussion that would have a, a possibility of passing at, in March. And I would tell you that the numbers, if you make that change very dramatic, will have dramatic impacts on smaller towns like mine. And so I, I would think if you're really trying to pass something, it's going to have to be a modest, reasonable change in the formula. Or you're going to find that you go to 100% ADM and you transfer a million dollars from one town to the other, there's going to be a lot of resistance to that. Uh, I'm going to pass around a copy of the DRA's uh, final public tax rates for 2017. And um, for some reason, the DRA has decided that it doesn't exist. Um, it goes from Andover to Ashland, but every other town it is listed here. <coughs> and I, I think it's, and the, and the reason I think it's important and the reason I passed it out is, is well, Pierce just said you could go 100% 100, 100 ADM and it shifts a million dollars from one town to the other. Um, I think actually the motion ought to be in the other direction, more for equalized valuation. It, it's never made sense <coughs> to me that a $200,000 house in one corner of the Conval School District pays more in taxes to Conval than a $200,000 house in another corner of the Conval School District. But that's the situation we're in now. So if you look, at, for example, at the sheet of paper you have in front of you, you know, for every thousand dollars of valuation in the town of Dublin, uh, the local education tax rate is twelve dollars and thirty-four cents. <coughs> uh, but if you look at the same number for the town of Peterborough, it's over sixteen dollars. So, while I while I understand the point that you know a change might have to be modest, I, I would kind of want to point out that. The, we have three towns with very low enrollments with costs per mill that are not just lower, but are dramatically lower than the rest of the district. Um, and I, I think that is part of what has to be has to be dealt with. We have one town that has a seventeen dollar per mill for local property local education property tax, and another one at twelve thirty four. That's a really pretty dramatic dramatic difference in considering talking about paying for the schools of the same district. Um, so I would like to see us move more in the direction of the heavier weighting towards, not for ADM, but heavier weighting towards blood valuation, which would address some of these um, financial inequities. I take Dick's point that it doesn't address the overall fiscal cost of the district, and it also doesn't address the sort of the social and educational issues that we've found in a small school, so it's certainly an incremental step, but it might be an important one. And the birth rates. The birth rate. I mean, as our funding formula is now, I'm going to characterize this as saying if we're rewarding towns that have very few students while also maintaining elementary schools for those towns with very few students. And then it kind of it's kind of messed up the the incentives of the towns to mm -hmm. make certain public policy mm -hmm. As far as affordable housing and those kinds of things. Right. Okay. 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 
pretty strict zoning laws. Mm -hmm. It reduces housing, it reduces the number of students. Still pays less than they than a local than, tax. Yeah. I mean, the way taxes are calculated it has to do with the valuation now. Well, right? So when you pay taxes, it's just mm -hmm. simply based on it. It's not the rate. It's also factoring in what the property value is. Okay, well, I think, I think uh, Rich's comment is that that's very true, but if, uh, if you have the same value house in one town and you're paying $17 per thousand mm -hmm. and another town's paying 12 is that fair? This leads into other questions that I'm not sure we want to go down at this point, but there's also questions about adequacy funding and what is that in between this contract that we've established as a district was the state's intervention with adequacy to equalize the burden for education. So there's a lot of other, there's other things to consider simply than the conversation we're having right now. And that's to the tune of millions of dollars, a couple million dollars, but it's not a small number. I don't. We have an answer. Yeah, it's in the fifteens, I think. And what's the state ed taxes? Do you know? State ed taxes are much closer together, so I didn't worry about them. So I don't know, but they're all in the mid mid two dollar range. Mm -hmm. Bob, do you happen to know what the state educational property tax rate rank on this? The tax rate uh, twenty seven. No, the, the mm -hmm. educational. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Rich. Just you just speak up. Local, sorry, just the local ed piece. I think it was something around 15. It's in an email that I sent to you guys that just yeah. searching up for it. Okay. Searching I'm sorry, I can't hear you.
I, I mean, when we, when we looked at these numbers, I just pulled up the play copy that I had back then with all the numbers um, for the 15, 16 school year. It matters for some towns greatly if we change the funding formula, and it matters for other towns almost not at all. Even if we went to 100% equalized valuation, it would only be about 3% difference in Peterborough, where it would be um, almost a 30% difference in Antrim or Dublin. That's all money. Yes, I mean, and, and those numbers are mm -hmm. I mean, just at the numbers that we did back then, we have, obviously we have extremes such as Antrim and Bennington, and on the other hand, Hancock and Dublin, but if you look at Temple, um, the difference between what they're paying, what they paid in 1516 at a 50-50 funding formula, and moving to 100% peak price valuation would have only been 33,000 out of 2.6 million. I haven't done that math yet, but it's certainly both not nothing. Though I don't think it's always true with the smallest school. Now, I, I said that the smallest, okay, so Temple might be one of the smallest schools. Temple has a relatively high local property tax rate currently. And so no, it probably wouldn't go much money if at all. Um, but there are other towns that don't have those. I, I mean, there's no magic solution that's painless to everyone. We've seen that when we talk about the consolidation plan. We've seen it when we talk about the configuration plan. It's a question of whether the pain is worth it and whether the pain is fair. So, um, and I, I think people have said pretty clearly that the pain of closing all of those schools within our consolidation plan, they don't think it's worth it. Uh, and so they're not going to vote for it. So now you're left with, even if it's a partial solution, do we buy ourselves some time to figure out how to do this? I, I, I think if we're not closing these schools, we have to look seriously at the reconfiguration type options that were presented to us. But I, I mean, I understand it, and you look at it from the point of view everybody should pay exactly the same tax rate or the same amount, and that would be maybe your city, but we're not with different townships that have differences, and I think that's why 50 50 also seems to. When we looked at it last time, um, an arbitrary that's fairly fair distribution. Um, we could also argue why 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 does a pupil from from Sharon cost thirty thousand dollars to be sent to school, and somebody who comes from a different township only eight thousand, right? And so that's why fifty fifty seem fair because they are they're, they're pretty arbitrary numbers that we're working with anyway. What's fair then? 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 40, 25? So what's What's fair to me, right, is the high school, it, it's a cooperative thing, right? Sure. The middle schools basically are a cooperative thing because their costs for people are very similar currently. But the elementary schools are pretty radically, radically different. And, and it does seem strange to me to be going to considerable expense of maintaining a school with 45 students in a town that literally pays the least. Taxes on the same property. So I, I understand your point about it's, it's an arbitrary number, but if we're talking about the 
a different arbitrary number that then prevents us from having to close small schools than if we talk about a different arbitrary number. Um, because as it's going, we can say we're not going to put this on the ballot all we want, but I guarantee you there'll be a petition more in articles to close out schools than we can. So let's, let's, at least, let's at least talk about it and consider it. I believe when the district was first looking at the funding formula is different. And it changed to make it fairer for the smaller communities because of just what Bern is talking about. Things have sort of changed now where it seems that we're asking larger towns to pay a larger portion of taking, keeping the small schools open. So at that time, the decision was made to be more equitable. I think we're, if we're going to be looking at anything, we want to go back and look at how do we bring that back again to make it what the original formula was. Um, the original formula was, was in the other direction. It was, 20, it was 25 <coughs> 25 students, 70, no, 75 per head students. And that's because of population. Right. Now, we're, that's now we're changing. And it was, it was switched the year prior to the building of the small elementary school that was announced. And, and that was basically the, that was the quick pro quo bond building all of these little elementary schools put on the change fund formula. And now we're 20 years on, we paid off the bonds. Um, you have to see the population go fill all those schools. I, I don't know it. Much easier conversation than closing schools because it's about everyone's tax bill and it gets painful. But um, <coughs> it, it, in the past, we've all accepted that we have a developing crisis and need to do something. And so, if you have a developing crisis and need to do something, you need to do something. So, well, no. here's um, I think I agree with you that. High school, from a financial standpoint, a usage standpoint, feels more cooperative. And the middle school is essentially the same thing. So, if, if you want to put this in terms of inequity or equity, then maybe it's really the, the dollars associated with the middle school as a as a point of reference for how we would redistribute funding. Right. So we're not looking at our schools of half a million dollars. So, and at some point, that school becomes that inefficient to the point where we should be paying more to keep it up. That's the that's the paradigm we should be looking through with this and how we get to what's fair and equitable. I mean I we didn't look at we didn't break it out by school level when Mary did that analysis, but we have 70 pages of information that we all sat down and looked over for months and months and months. And came she came to the conclusion that as as we are operating now, the funding formula was equitable. Financially, that was her statement, very clear in the report. Um, but I think if we're going to have this conversation with the public, this is the only issue that's going to probably be reasonably interpreted in a way that we can explain it, and that would be that we could work together to kind of find an equitable solution, then, or at least partial solution, if people feel the equity. Yeah, yeah, we had this discussion with Zach. You know, I I've been on the board now. This would be my sixth. And um, I have yet to get the call saying the education of my local school and my local school is not up to snuff. I get calls from the Hancock. Well, you refer them back to me then. Okay? I did. They said they didn't want to do so. Okay, can I read here? Anyways, uh, I think that I don't get a lot of calls. I don't get really many calls about the quality of the So, what I'm hearing is, is that as far as the high school and the middle schools, Cooperation and the funding should probably stay about the same. However, for the elementary schools, there seems to be an inclination to push the costs of students and building back to the individual towns. That's what I'm hearing. Um, don't say the towns want that, I'm just saying that's what I'm hearing. Um, what the impact would be on each individual town sometimes would be significant. I'm not sure if that's a palatable solution. 
but those towns that find it to be significant would then perhaps choose to send their students to a more affordable school, rather than keep their local school open. Uh, it is a decision that no town wants to take to close their local school. I have a small town, we would like to keep our local school. Ours is not one that is critically low in students, but the demographics of our community, unless it changes, could generate that type of scenario in the very near future. This is the conundrum. So, uh, just a reminder to the board and anyone else who's listening, um, the, the discussion isn't just about money and saving money and figuring out how to make things more equitable for the towns that want to keep their elementary schools open. It's about what's a sound education, and yes, we're providing a very sound education to our students, but could it be better um, if there were if, if we spent $3 million more dollars and kept the buildings that we have, our administrators have told us, yes, it can be better. We need to do something to give more flexibility to the teams at each of the schools for our kids, to have services for our kids at these schools, like nurses and OTs and PTs and, and what have you. I just, the, su the subject isn't just about money. We're getting to that point where some of the schools are so small that maybe we need to look at whether or not we need to look at the education and finding alternatives. Um, I was going to say, um, this discussion so far has been um, simply about um, the tax rates and how we uh, financially uh, support our, develop our budget, support our budget, but in the origin of the um, towns coming together to provide education was in response to the changing educational environment and requirements um, in the country in the 1960s. And I think that's what we're trying to respond to now is changing demographics and changing environmental requirements and environment. And, we're, and that hasn't been part of the discussion hardly at all. I mean, that's what drove our decision to look at consolidation finally, as opposed to a reconfigure, uh, re reconfiguration, um, was because um, we, are, we are looking down the road to the birth rate. And I think if we don't keep on looking in that direction and considering what type of education we are going not only provide our children now, but also in the future, we're really missing the larger issue. It should always be predominantly, uh, it should always be primarily the benefit of the students. Uh, we as a board, I think, and all the members of the board have that desire to see that always be the primary aspect of of both our special needs students as well as our traditional students both have uh, you know need the adequate services that the district can provide <coughs> and improve on the political reality though is that we have to meet the taxpayers needs as well as their the budget affordability <coughs> and there is a sense that Towns are, certain towns are paying less than their fair share, and other towns are paying more than their fair share, which is continually coming back to this board as to what do we do, you know, and yet we're still trying to provide that quality of education to the students across the entire district. I firmly believe that the district as a whole can better provide that, ed that quality education than a fractured district where you have individual towns going out on their own again places in the state, that's what happens. Um, however, we do have to put in front of the voters uh, unpalatable proposals. It's, it's, it's going to be unpalatable to somebody. Uh, closing small schools is unpalatable to the small towns. Uh, the only way it would become palatable, uh, palatable, uh, palatable uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it would only way it would become something that would be politically uh, viable uh, would be if they discovered the true cost of running those schools. Yet, is it right that those small towns 
depend on the larger school or larger towns to subsidize some of the additional services they need to provide that quality of education. The sense is, let me make one more thing, the sense is that small schools do provide a good education even if we don't have all the programs, all the facilities that a larger school might be able to offer. Read the report. You can read the report online. It outlines the equity in the district financially. Are you having a separate discussion? Uh, our superintendent had a query. Had a, I know yeah. I was going to call on it. So I would just remind the board that um, any in any given year, some schools are so, or some towns are supporting other towns' costs associated to the district. And in two or three years down the road, the the reverse is true. So and I, you know, we talked about special ed costs this, earlier this evening, and you know those students live in in our towns, and in any given year. Those students might live in Dublin, but two or three years later, those students live in Peterborough or Sharon. Um, so I would just remind people that you can take a snapshot and look at a snapshot today or tomorrow, and it's gonna say one thing, but in three or four years down the road, that same snapshot can say something else. So whatever your decision is, it needs to be sustainable over a long period of time. Might be an elementary school issue, we should look at elementary school. And that's that's fine, but that still can be addressed within changes to the funding formula. It just means we're changing the funding formula you know, for a third of our expenses rather than for all of them. So if doing it for the entire district might have been, you know, 75 percent equal evaluation, maybe because we're only dealing with elementary school, it means 60 percent, right? So we could still do it within something that's going to be something people are able to understand if they go in. Um, regarding the, the 70 page analysis that Marion did, it was very good. Um, it was done like any analysis like that, given certain constraints and assumptions. And one of those constraints and assumptions was that the structure of the district was fundamentally equitable, and this was a financial study only. I think what Dix pointed out is that if the structure of the district is not fundamentally equitable, then the distribution of those costs is almost not beside the point, but it's almost beside the point. If, if as a result of the structure of the district, we have a $47 million budget instead of a $3 million budget, then it's not just a matter of the percentages in each town, it's the fact that the overall budget is higher than it might be. And that was specifically outside of the scope of what Marion did. And then the last thing is, following a little bit of what Kimberly just said, people often quote to us, you know, our cost per pupil is X in this town. And the reality is they've got absolutely no idea what the cost per pupil is. Because they don't know that their, that their little town has four out of district places. The cost is a million dollars. So the fact is none of us has any idea what the cost per pupil in our town are. And they change every year. So it's, I know it's hard. I'm not expecting people to love it. I just think we need to, we did promise to put something on the ballot. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, how, do, how do we move forward on looking at the funding formula change? So, so the, I think the numbers that we looked at a few, I don't know, a couple of years ago were um, numbers that were net numbers after the adequacy. So if you, I mean, and, and so if we, if we take the adequacy out, then I don't know, how, how would you treat adequacy? Would that go to the district or still to the towns if we change the funding formula? Okay, me? Yeah. Again, for up to me, it would be 100% equalized valuation and all adequacy money going to the district. But if it's something less than 100% equalized valuation, mm -hmm. then you gotta, I mean, the purpose of adequacy is to account for the difference. Right. And, and if, you, if you look at the numbers of how much that would change, if you did that? Have I looked at numbers how much it would change? And all the money to the district for the town? That was one of the things that Mary looked at. 
I mean, the short answer, I mean, just because uh, you, you pointed out that, you know, right, the so, insurance, so, insurance rate, tax rate would fall dramatically if we went to EDM. If, if the but, adequacy stayed there. Right. Right. So, yeah, I just went back. This might actually end up hurting it. It does hurt you. So if you look at, and, and I'm just saying, like, I, no matter how you change the formula, I, I don't think we're going to get to drastically different numbers from what we have right now, like, if you take all those suggestions into account. If you look at, if you look at entrance, it was 2.7 million 100% um, declared valuation. And um, the, the ADM, like if, or whatever, if you take the adequacy out and you go by it, you would be at a little over $3 million. And that, that, that. Yeah, no, it, there's not a perfect solution. Here, here's why I like the <coughs> EDM, regardless of how many taxation people going, not EDM, but going by equalized value. We talk about needing to have the district mindset, but we're not right now, we're not counts. Mm -hmm. um, we have different reassessment cycles and different location ratios every year. So a particularly expensive year hits a town, hits a certain group of towns, where if the next year was a particularly expensive year, it would be a different set of towns. That's an ongoing problem. Uh, and you know, the, the third thing is that if costs were district one, which is basically what it means solid wise valuation. And the overall financial structure of the district, which Dick referenced at the very beginning, of should the should the structure should the budget here be 43 million, not 47, is something that's actually in everyone's interest to consider. Where right now, for a large number of people in the district, they don't get it. So it's now I understand we're not moving to 100% equalized valuation in this model. I, I'm wanting to suggest though that we should be looking at something that moves moves the ratio, something a little to the side of it, is... Where would you suggest? Again, I think we need to look at the, look at the numbers. If I were starting, I would say to the administration, I'm sorry, but I would say to the administration, you, you gave us this reconfiguration model, which you said allowed us to provide a better education in the small schools at a cost of two and a half million dollars more a year. But that two and a half million dollars more assumes additional days from teachers which we're never going to get, right? So, which we haven't done. Uh, so that's off the, that portion of it is off the table. What could you do to <coughs> get as close to the vision that you had in this reconfiguration to provide better educational experiences in the small schools? How much does that cost? And we add that to the budget and figure out what that means we would need to do to fund the formula in order to provide because what's really not there to me, even if you accept the status quo as a fan, like Marianne's report, we're talking about spending well beyond the status quo to provide adequate education in very small schools. It's not fair to me to say to those towns that don't have the enrollment problem, you have to spend even more. You know, it's going to be $19 per mill in Greenfield in order to make this work. <laughs> so this does kind of, our formula looks at EDM and evaluation and evaluation. Um, we talked a little bit about the success. What, what would be, what about setting a floor for EDM? You know, our formula for payment is based on those two 50-50 breaks. We have, let's say we have 50 kids in hand. We get charged all the time for 55 or 60. And so if our funding formula, our contribution to the district is set as a floor, even though we don't have that number in the school. So this is the proportion the funding um, in, the, in the way that you know, in the way that maybe the other schools that has. So essentially, you'd say, okay, I mean, I think that's interesting. I mean, it's the same, it's the same factors. But it's, but it's, it's, it's simpler, and we don't have to introduce new concepts. You know, you know, this could be a line in the, in the articles of agreement. It would, it would have to be something close to the percentage of enrollment that is in the, the small, the other small towns. So if if, if uh, it's you 90 percent enrollment, it should be ninety percent enrollment. 
moment for a, a percentage or we get down to percentage. Building capacity. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. That's an interesting thought. And it's definitely something to right? Well, it's not. It's simply to explain. It's not actually to <laughs> but I think just never losing sight that with whatever change we have, it's based on sort of the, I don't want to say it's based on the, the $3 million extra model, because it's not $3 million, because we're not going to be able to present the dream model given the restrictions we have with our staff. Um, but I think whatever we do, we can't, I, I wouldn't, I think it's a fascinating idea, Pierce, and something we should look into, but I wouldn't want to do anything without changing the way we're educating our, our students, first and foremost. Like, try to figure out a way to make it better. Great, but you were talking to, about that, one of the factors that a lot of school districts look at is, is performance data, honestly. They look at the schools, those schools that are performing poorly, and in some cases have to learn are are and so when I when I heard you talking about how are they doing I, and how do we know we're getting an adequate education, a good education, that's what popped in my head. Is that's how a lot of schools go forward. That's a complicated uh, discussion, right? Because the demographics of your town are different. That you really have to look at their performance relative to their demographics. End up with one down higher test scores than another. It doesn't mean that you know, the, the school with the lower test scores is doing a worse job if they're outperforming their demographics. They might actually do an exemplary job. So it's very it's hard. To, it's not possible, obviously, but it's not. I don't know if it's one. Okay. So are we talking about how we're going to get to a solution, or are we yes. talking about the solution? It seems to me we've been talking about the merits of doing this, doing that. How are we going to get this done? We're not going to do it in a room like this. Well, I think, I right. think yeah, a model has to be prepared to look at the various aspects of it. Here's this comment relative to adding <coughs> numbers to that, and then the, the, the uh, value of shifting to 75% or whatever that number is, uh, equity. So we've got to set up some spreadsheets and take a look at those things and then talk about it. Kristen. And also I'd like some clarity to follow up with what Linda said. I'm all on board with what Linda said. Whatever changes we make, whether it's funding formula or this idea that Pierce came up with, is that just to keep the status quo of what's going on in our, the really good status quo that's going on in our, in our classrooms? Or is it to up a notch and can we take anything from that wonderful reconfiguration model? I mean, I these the ideas. Question. I wrote the second half. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, we need to that clarity. I don't think we can I don't think we can do that. We can sit with that configuration model and pull the number for additional days out. But right. if, if there are other things in that model that don't make sense about the additional days, then I'm sorry, I think you had it all. So I I think <laughs> To, to Chris and to your point, um, I think that you know it really depends on being able to stabilize the conversation around um, the finances. Because if if we're going to be asking for more dollars, and people already think <clears throat> one town already thinks, or multiple towns already think that the financial formula is um, inadequate or arbitrary or unfair to them. Then, then it's hard to ask for more money, um, particularly since many people look at defining enrollment and say, well, why isn't it costing less? And, you know, we could do a whole 45-minute presentation, and I talked a little bit about this at SAC, about the fact that, well, actually, we have decreased our budget over the last decade, um, and in pretty substantial ways. <laughs> um, but. The, the fact that we keep getting down things downshifted onto our budget has has really hurt us. Um, so I think that you know we can look at different models of education. And I, I know specifically you really talk, talking about that highly personalized pathway for every student. Um, but those kind of pathways and, and those, that kind of educational model 
inherently cost more money. Um, and, and so we're kind of right now caught in a little bit of a cycle of how, how do we solve the problem so that we can move forward. So this is just, just whatever changes you make on the warrant article for funding formula or finances, it's really just going to. I think it starts us down that road, but. But that's where we're at right now. Right. Just, just show that it's clear for all of us and for the public. Do you think, with Pierce's idea, do you think that that would finally put an end to some of the various warrant article shenanigans that have been happening over the past year? If we say, here's the capacities of all of the schools, all the elementary schools, if you don't hit 90%, you're going to pay for 90%, and that's the way it goes. Um, and then I think it would stop everybody from. Hancock would, they, they're covering the cost of essentially their school at 90%. I don't know, do you think it would stop the, stop the argument? If it did cover those costs, then probably it would be less, it would be less vocal about it. I guess that my question is, do you think it's something that would stop? Jerry, I was going to say, the task is in the building, the dimension of is roughly 150. So we have to maintain 75%. We charge 75% of How would that happen? Well, you've got to run the numbers. I don't know if it's yet, but it might be closer to 90% to do it. You have to look at the schools and how full the, the other towns are. <coughs> if they're at 90% capacity, then all the towns should be at 90% capacity. Yeah, there is. There's a long thing. It's the first thing you have to do is define capacity. That's right. right. So the 150 number is, is, is five grades at 30 per classroom, which we never did. Mm -hmm. So the real is more like 120. We have to look at right. yeah, functional capacity. Well, are, are we talking about functional capacity? And I'm just asking for clarification. Are we talking about functional capacity, or are we talking about our capacity based on our own um, guide, our own guidelines? Because Remember, our capacity in kindergarten is, is 15 to 18 children. So, is that a capacity you're really talking about? So, and I'm fine either way, I just want to be clear. And then, you have to think the middle school and high school, and because we are way below capacity in those buildings as well. So, then you're saying that they pay the capacity of, you know, which is also us, which is also the Temple isn't paying just for Temple kids that are in the elementary school. We're supporting the middle school and we're supporting the high school. Um, we're not just, a, it's not just the elementary school. We send kids and we're supporting all those other programs right, right, right. as well. So one way to come up with that number, right, would be we have a model placed in front of us by the administration that implicitly assumes the certain number of students in the class. Right? We could say that's the numbers, that's the, the administration has determined as educationally and financially appropriate is whatever number of students in the class in the, the consolidation conference. And then you so multiply that times five. Let's say that I'm going to do this consistent with the policy that we have in the class size. No. And, and so then you compare that, which is you know one possible. We might have 18, I think it's 18, right, in an elementary school classroom. 18 times 5 is what we would consider a reasonable capacity for one of the small elementary schools. Is it higher than 18? 90 students. Is it higher than 18? Uh, I mean, there's 20 in elementary school. Okay. 15 to 18 for kindergarten, 18 to 20 for first and second grade, 20 to 22 for third and fourth. But generally, we don't. Right. But so. I mean, but if, if we're all being honest, we, we generally do not put 22 children in the classroom because by the time we're getting there, we're, we're, we're usually, I'm not that's not actually, usually working. I'm not actually talking about putting just the classroom. I'm saying we have, we have a, yeah, certified, yeah. a reasonable number that's taking kids, and that's 90 and not five grade school. Yeah. And we're not the number of students in the class, we're not saying we have five grade school rather than a percentage of the theoretical capacity say we could have we could have 18 students per classroom. Your minimum is going to be whatever we take 18 students per classroom. So in this small school 
So what about putting your name in the people? This doesn't work for those two schools. And you've got to figure out their capacity as well. Uh, they are in the same situation. They are in the same situation. If you were going to that way. But I, the, the, the point <laughs> is, well, we don't look at, we don't look at chairs. Let's, let's one person talk. If you don't look at chairs, and you only look at, because does Hancock have the capacity to have two kindergartens and then one each grade? So does Antrim not have six classrooms that you could use if there were two kindergarten classes and four grades? Because Peterborough, how do you divide Peterborough? You can't say Peterborough gets, their capacity is 18 kids per grade. It would be 18 per grade times three or 18 per grade times four. Because there's four. Are you taking out, you take that piece out entirely? Honestly, because I, I am gonna I am gonna push back on that notion that the other day Antrim and Peter are in the same position. Antrim is over ninety percent capacity, so that, that it's not the same position at all. Um, but but I would I would so you, see Peter you could just say it's a four it's a four per school. I mean it's right it's ninety for any school uh, because the issue that we're still dealing with is that certain of our schools are very low. No, absolutely. I I don't know whether that's the case. Um, first of all, I think the difference again will be less impactful than we think right now here. Second, if a town would pay for a school of 90, no matter how many kids are in the school, the town will also request the services for a school of 90, no matter how many kids are in the school. So okay. Well, we'll they'll get what they're getting now. Hmm? They're getting now, which they're getting now. And we, we have ensured these small school services. Yeah. They're getting the same services they get Peter Rowe or Anna. Um, I, I, I don't Is that think, not true? I don't think staffing of a, of a, of a 90K right. school of everything, the support services and staffing. Yeah, the because they, they, they travel from school to school and you have the same capacity for the same amount well, of money. Well, we need to talk to the administration about that. Because that one at a time. Okay, second, if we, if we exclude, points, if, if we just go by, by, by the most recent numbers for, for, for Dublin, um, Dublin sends around 160 kids to, to the different schools, and 40 or whatever of them are not grades one through four, right? And if we bring um, those up to 20 per grade, <coughs> The, the difference would only be less than five percent because because vamping it up by two hundred percent. So I don't think it's going to make a big difference. I mean, if it really makes no big difference, then it doesn't. Matter. I mean, my my issue still remains that for a lot of us, I think the primary motivation. For Consolidation was not just about money. No, absolutely. It was about services. And I really don't still see how it's reasonable to expect towns that already build the funding formula is equitable to increase the overall budget by another couple of million dollars <coughs> to provide equitable services and responsible. But, so if we need to spend more money, we need to figure out a way to get that more money from the towns that directly benefit from that. But the town that is most recently complained about the funding formula isn't impacted by any changes in the funding formula. No matter how we spin it, they're always going to pay the same. But if, if the district budget changed to $49 million, then Peterborough still pay the third is $49 million instead of those third is $37 million. That's, that's fundamentally the problem. We're going to do the thing in the reconfiguration model to make the educational experience work in the smallest schools. That has a dollar figure associated. That is a dollar that only benefits the smallest schools. That's not necessary to do those things in the larger schools. So we need to figure out some way that if we need to do these things in order to keep these small schools open, the towns that have those small schools that require this extra country are the ones that, that pay for it. I, I don't think that's, I understand it's hard, I just don't think it's a reason. I think the, the restructuring plan would address the staffing issues on some level. Um, because you'd be bringing more staff to go over the elementary schools because it would be 
there'd be more kids or something. Yes, I get, you know, between the SACs and anything I've heard out there, you know, the consolidation model, though, it may be beneficial for operating the schools, it may be beneficial for quality of the education. It's dead on arrival as far as the vote is concerned. Uh, so I don't think, I think one thing we can accomplish tonight is not wasting our superintendents and our staff's time further on that model. Because I just don't think that there is going to be any consensus to put it through. It's not going to happen. Uh, even though I think it's a good, it's a, it's a reasonable model. I mean, I don't disagree with it. Yeah. So there's a political, political will to get it through. I, I'm just, the reason I'm smirking at you is not you, I apologize. Yeah, I know, I, but I opposed us making the promise to put it on the ballot. I voted to put it on the ballot anyway because lots of people will get very upset and now we're going to break the promise. After the fact, I, think it's, uh, I mean, perhaps the party. How many things, like, can we put two things on the war and article at the same time? What if they both have? No. You can't. I, I don't have the capacity. I mean, you guys need to. I mean, I'm sorry. No, it's, uh, I would just There's only really so much capacity. It, I mean, there's only so much capacity to do the work. Um, you know, we can't. And, and okay. let's say so, so many radicals like yeah. we can go down. Yeah. Let's say this. Let's say we're going to do this and we're going to do this and both of them pass. And then you've got a number of what you did. One was funding and the other one was public school. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I, you know, I guess. I don't think we're going to come to a consensus tonight. I think perhaps the best alternative that we can actually look at and present to the voters that may actually have a chance that there is a funding formula change has been proposed by several people here. Where those numbers should be, I don't know who's going to make that determination and how we can come to consensus of that. I would say that we're going to have to do several spreadsheets and look at what the numbers do and talk about it because we're talking about all hypotheticals hypotheticals tonight because we're saying what is this going to do, what's that going to do? We're going to have to take a look at stuff and see what actually happens for some of these So I think that that's the, the thing that's going to happen. That, uh, if we don't do the uh, consolidation, that will mean that instead of a, a committee being formed to do that, this administration being working on that, that they'll have to spend the time doing spreadsheets so we can look at what these different uh, alternatives are. Like. Just to ask for consensus of the board because I feel like we all kind of are already there, so maybe we call the question and just move it on for some questions to further analyze the financial analytics of, and determine a uh, funding formula modification okay. uh, as an option. Do I have a second? Mm -hmm. No? Okay, what do you want to do? Go ahead. I'm going to wait for a second. 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 Okay, now so for the last couple of years, we've told people that the 50-50 funding formula is a fair way to do it. And we are in a bind because we promised to put something on the ballot that we think is not going to pass. And now we're going back on what we've told people for two years that is a fair distribution just to get out of that bind. I think that's mm -hmm. terrible. I don't think that's what we said. Yeah. We said in the current configuration it's a fair, fair funding. We haven't said that the, the current makeup of the district is fair. Okay. I, I, it, the flip side of that is that you can't change the fund, funding formula in order to bond for the local schools. If you close the local schools, there's an argument to change the funding formula back to the way it used to be. So I'm just saying, there's another angle to that. Yeah, that's true. So the difference, the difference apparently, this is what I'm going to say. We have heard from the administration again and again and again that. The model is impacting their ability to provide the services they want for these homes, right? It's very expensive, and now we're getting to a point where we have to spend much more in order to provide them. That's the difference between two years ago and three years ago. But we weren't talking about that. We weren't talking about spending an extra million or two million dollars to do the configuration type stuff and you know, the two teachers in the classroom and things like that. Now you're talking about spending a significant amount of additional money, I think that does change the calculus of what it could be there. But the premise of the reconfiguration wasn't adding teachers, it was reconfiguring right. how you're using teachers. 
So it was trying to have a special educator um, alongside a regular educator um, as a team, even if it included three grades, similar to what they're doing in uh, Dublin this year as a pilot. And so it wasn't really looking at those teachers being additional. It was trying to cover some of our special needs um, needs, needs with, a, with what we were hoping to go to, which was an inclusion or a team approach. Which I That's not entirely accurate. There were there were two teachers. They were not necessarily a co-teaching, or they were co-teaching, but they were not necessarily a special educator in the. Well, in a what I worked, teacher. I worked on that as an administrator, Kimberly, and we were trying to have the teams be a regular educator and a special educator together. But they weren't necessarily, I just want to make sure that people don't think that that's necessarily what it would end up being doing that. Because no, it didn't always end up like that. But the reconfiguring was trying to utilize our people yes. in a more efficient, or effective way for student learning. Yes. So it didn't add people? Didn't necessarily like, add people. But it did add people. Yes, because we were hopeful that to really co-teach, that it would happen on the fly. Right. But you have to add more human capacity, you can't add more days, you have to add more people working the same number of days. So it ends up being a little better. If you're not going to get the 200 days, I'm not sure that by the team Rich with you and you and I were going to present something. Adding more yes. people for us to present isn't going to give us the time to plan. <coughs> well, you know. Would it put people on the question? Are you going to plan? I'm rotating. No, I think not. Yeah. We still have to ask the administration the question of what in that configuration plan. No, I think we should ask what would that plan look like given the current CBDA contract. And the restrictions that we have in the district court. <laughs> Are we all agreeing that we're taking the the closing of schools idea off the table for now? There is a motion. I've got a, well, I've got a motion on forward. Well, I'm not going to vote on it until I know the answer to that last question because I don't so want to give our superintendent. No, I'm going to give our superintendent a heart attack. We have her working on three different things instead of just one. I just want a clarification on what's on the floor. <laughs> you, Brenda, could you? Um, I would love to hear to be uh, to, so I have it to further analyze the financial analytics. Yeah, analyze the financial analytics. That's a mouthful. Of the, uh, of the district and, and determine uh, a new funding formula. So we, want to have, we want to have available, what you're saying, as as awesome. available spreadsheets for the various alternatives. As, 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 as the chair is. Is that true? Yeah. We'll yep, here. Yeah. Provides, provides spreadsheets for the board to review that look at the various alternatives that we've discussed tonight. Good. Uh, just want to, the present configuration of schools within the district. Is that what we're saying? That's what, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, okay. without, mm -hmm. without closing any schools. So. Right. Okay. Just getting a mixed message from yeah. some other configuration. The talk of reconfiguration was yeah, uh, changing the way we educate kids. It was the one that had the two teachers in the age range classrooms rather, rather than single multi age. Multi -age. Truly multi age versus multi age. Some movement, some movement of this moment. Okay, well, we have the motion on the floor. Does everybody understand the motion, Carl? Kristen? Uh, at what point will we have conversation and we figure out the analytics? What point are we going to talk about? 
what the towns are going to get from this decision or what all the kids are going to get from this decision? I think that once we get the financials and we have an opportunity to look at them, we can talk about that until okay. we get the, in the information that everybody is interested okay. in. It's kind of hard to do. Thank you. What the time frame of that is, I don't know yet. That's up to the administration to let us know. But is there any further discussion on the, on the motion? So, Rich? Yeah. I want to go back to what Linda said. <coughs> so, and I want to point out again, we made a promise. And that was not probably a good idea, but we did make it. And then we advanced the plan in fulfillment of that promise. And now we're going back on that. So I would want to say, if we did this, if we're going to, if we're committing to putting something on that, if we can't come up with a funding formula takes, then we go back to the <coughs> That also keeps us all honest. It makes us really look at the funding formula change. We we promised right to put something on the ballot. And now we've advanced it and upset hundreds of people. And now we're gonna pull back. And we're not gonna put that on the ballot if we can come up with funding for change. I'm suggesting that we yeah, have to put well, one yeah. on the ballot. That putting nothing on the ballot in March is irresponsible <laughs> at this point. If, and this was already we can put college supposed to be on the ballot the last March. We've already delayed by four years. Um, we made a promise and we should keep it. So if we're gonna look at funding formula instead, then it should be a replacement for the closing schools. But, but if we can't come to a funding formula agreement, then we should go back to the, the closing schools because otherwise we're gonna get into the weeds of the funding formula and you know I just have a quick question. Is this work really going to be done by the implementation committee still? Or is that now on the table? It's on hold. Okay. You're off the hook. I, I, would, I would support what Rich has said. We, we look at the funding formula to finance the reconfiguration as was presented in the first ever presented model or well, we, haven't we put the consolidation on the ballot. The, the, okay, you, we can say that but the motion on the floor right now is to look at have spreadsheets to look at the financial alternatives that we've talked about. Correct? Has everybody got to to the vote on this, yes. What? I'm still done. I'm not I'm not <laughs> You, you can't take those things in isolation. I'm, I'm not voting for just looking at the funding problem. If we want to take the consolidation plan off the ballot, somebody so might have, have to, to modify. Pull the, pull the motion off the floor. Can I revise it? I revise it. I'll revise it to include a phrase that says, or the board will consider the consolidation model in lieu of changes to the on funding Okay, so that's been moved in a second. So the motion now is to look at the, uh, the funding formula in the context of worksheets, and if we can't reach an agreement on that, then we go back to the consolidation formula. Consolidation. So currently it's in lieu. In lieu. Of. If it doesn't work out, then we're okay. I can hold it. Okay, everybody clear on what the motion is? Jim? What are we doing with the implementation? Stuff. Is that, Nothing's going to happen on this until we get this other one. Okay. So, the fact that we're not going to man up the implementation team kind of means that that initiative is dead anyway, right? Well, that's starting now. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, that's up to the superintendent how, how that goes. I'm not going to get in the middle of that one. No, but, but, the, the middle. So, but the implementation team, though. <laughs> The selectman advisory committee, they don't have people willing to put the time and effort to do it. That's true. So, why don't we recognize reality? You know, the effort has no what, 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 Why are we trying to force on this? The motion on the floor is. I, I know. What that vote is, I'm commenting. Okay. Well, I'll be commenting. Stephen? The bottom line is we promised the voters to give them the opportunity on paper to make a decision. You know, implementation of it could be delayed if we have to, but bottom line is we have to give them choices. And we're trying to give them one choice that we would at least think is viable. They may disagree with us. Um, 
feedback that we've all gotten is that, you know, consistently gotten is still don't want to close this fall school, even if it benefits the students and makes for a more cohesive school district. Understandable, they don't want to. So we're looking at this other model. And if this other model doesn't work out, we still may present them with, they're saying, an unacceptable plan, which in which case they voted down, it's dead. Uh, but we do have to put something on. We promise we will do our best to put something on the budget. I was under the impression that the invitation team was going to give the details to the voters to make an informed decision about voting schools. And we can't get people to sign up to do the implementation team. Because there's no interest in closing the schools. So the selectmen have, yeah. uh, right, the selectmen have been offered the opportunity to participate in the process. Right? And they declined it. Fine. Just like last I knew, we had to fully staff this full board member participation as well. We got a bunch of people theoretically interested, but no one's signing up for it. But we had a mid December timeline, I think, for uh, that. Our actual deadline is like the 10th of January. So we have to determine what's on that computer ballot. So maybe we can still do it. I'm hopeful that we get a funny part of the thing. Well, okay, probably okay what I'm saying, but if, if the demographic, demographics continue to move in a direction where we all get on, shouldn't we have an implementation plan for consolidation anyway? I mean, shouldn't we be planning for that if that's, if that's the more likely than not scenario? And so you could do that at the same time. Well, maybe you can't, but it's something Are you like, talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to someone you know, that's, that's what I said. You know, said. Say yeah, this, but I mean, both. it seems like we should be doing both at the same time. Uh, if we can't, have enough resources to do both at the same time, and we all know that. There's pieces of it, maybe we can do it. So, the transportation analysis that really has to be done by the company, right? So, we can still start that. Um, the facilities, the strictly facilities, that work I would think is different equal than the configuration type stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a whole set of committee on facilities. Right? It's still a lot of work for the administration, but I think it might be different administrators. And that piece would still be because I, I you're right, we hate you, but I think you're clearly right. <laughs> so <laughs> um, Thing. You may not support it, but you commit to putting it on. 
So let's ask the question a little bit different way. If we look at all the various funding formula possibilities that we've discussed tonight in the spreadsheet so we can all look at it and talk about it, do you think we will be able to come up with one that we can put on the ballot by a majority vote? <coughs> Well, <laughs> so I just, first of all, someone's going to have to go through with me, so maybe one of you can come in and say, you know, this, 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 and this, so there, we might have to have a subcommittee meeting to go through all of the different options you want to look at. Um, the, the second piece is something I'm not remembering right now, so I'll move on and I'm sure it will come back to me. It is bad as me, but I'm a lot older than you. I'm losing my memories. Rich? Um, first of all, is your proposal now off the table? Well, I'm hearing your answer, oh, right? So I'm just, I'm just here, here's what I'm afraid of, right? And I've been here almost six years, and I don't trust us, <laughs> right? So what, what do we do? We'll look at the funding formula for a month, and then we'll say, oh, Jesus, this looks really hard. Let's delay it for a year. When we've already delayed it for a year, and people are getting Curious about that, and when we've already upset the community. So all I want us to do is make a commitment to doing something. When we've said this issue, and which I sincerely believe this issue, I think we're looking at schools and five students for them, and I think that's an issue. So I want us to commit to doing something. I think at this point we have to again withdraw the proposed. Un Unrevising? Unrevising. <laughs> well, basically, with broad period, because we're basically to start fresh with just a commitment to have a structure <coughs> superintendent to do a financial analysis. financial analysis and make it so that the board can come to a recommendation for a possible funding formula change for the bound. So by a certain date. I just said we have to withdraw it. Let's keep the word in discussion. Go ahead. Is that your motion? No, I did not make a motion. I'm just saying that we've got to. We got one on the floor now. We've we have to withdraw the other. Do we really need to, though? Well, here, here's what here, I, I think we have a consensus, and I'll ask for a consensus. That we need the superintendent and administration to provide us with some financial information via spreadsheets, the various alternatives that we've discussed. Rich and I can go in and outline these various alternatives so we can have spreadsheets with them and we can work on it. If everybody agrees with that, I'll accept the motion to that effect. Um, so moved. That's what the motion so we have to just That's basically the motion. Um, uh, yeah, that was the motion. Exactly. So what do we do? The first motion is where? I mean, am I withdrawing it, or do you just want to take it? Well, if you accept what I've said is that your revised motion, I, I would withdraw my second. Okay, now you want to say I would withdraw my motion. motion then. I, I, I would like. It. Okay. Well, why don't you <laughs> suggest the motion? Here's the part. So what is the the so it is a funding formula change, but not simply to um, get more revenue, but to get more revenue for the specific purpose of reconfiguration <coughs> re 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 to implement pieces. pieces. Okay. So, so just to be clear, model model one, kind of that reconfiguration where we need to really truly multi-age, particularly at the uh, um, elementary and really look at preschool and et cetera, et cetera, is, is something that's going to have to happen over a period of time. Right? We, we are not going to change the funding formula and suddenly that's going to enable us to do those things. That is a that is a, ch a change in philosophy. It's really pivoting our philosophy into really that strongly, which by the way, I'm all in favor of, but the personalized learning um, model. And, and as we move further into that, eventually then, you know, we would be adding more, potentially more staff, um, and it, just so your words, one one does not well, have to your just, project in order to get this right. Like position. just changing the funding formula isn't going to make that possible. 
it's going to take a lot more than just changing the funding. Even changing the funding formula takes a full 18 months to make them back. Right. right? Yeah. So, so there's 18 months right there. So I just want to make sure that no one thinks that's going to happen over so, Rich, I think you sorry, I want to understand what you're just saying. So you're asking us to revise the motion to say, to essentially say, come up with financial alternatives that also reflect portions of reconfiguration that maybe... Uh, all I was asking to do by withdrawing my second was to be clean up this, because we now revise this motion for refund. Okay. And so then we just start over, okay. that's and whatever the <laughs> motion is. And then you want me to try one more time? Fine. Go right ahead. Instruct the superintendent to develop financial alternatives to the current uh, formula, period. That, I, mean, I don't want to start the second sentence, but <laughs> if, we, if we stick with that, that simple motion, yeah, that simple motion, one. we'll have a second. I think these other considerations, you have a second. The superintendent is here listening to us, she understands where our concerns are. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of the motion to look at financial alternatives. Can Brenda read it back again? Yes, she can read it back again. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Maybe. Can I, can I make a, a, just an organizational <coughs> statement about having the spreadsheets electronic, in electronic format, having them available through Google Drive, having them well in advance of the meeting that we're going to discuss this, so that we all have an opportunity to absorb it and have our questions ready so we're not we're not guessing at what we want to see. Well I can And when I say well before, I mean not, you know, a couple of days before you know, I sit down. Yeah. So I can give you yeah, yes, of course. We we can get it ahead of time. I am not sure I will have to explore ways in which we can share those documents because when you go in and one person changes it and another person changes it, so that would, it. Right, so that would be a little more difficult. So I'll have to look at that. And, and I have to tell you that in my opinion, forgive me Google, I, I do not know that Google's, what our, the school base of Google spreadsheets is gonna cut, cut it. I, I, we absolutely are gonna need to use Excel. Okay. I mean, like I said, well, that was more she can send a copy of it out. But I think you're, you're <laughs> wanting to be able to grab it. And and yeah. multiple, multiple copies is what you're going to have to do because there are multiple alternatives that we're going to look at. Okay. But yes. Oh, that's one thing for pointing out the bed rolls. Okay. I'll call for a vote now. Any further questions? You've got to read the motion that we're. Yep. So I've got the motion as here's going to revise his motion. Direct administration. Alternatives to the current formula through spread through spreadsheets well in advance of the board vote. Kind of that 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 we're discussing together, but um, it was a new motion. Yeah. Um, yeah, still not. But I think well in advance of a board discussion versus vote. So no, I'm not going to do the That was the motion, right? Your initial motion was like eight words. Yeah. To instruct, remember, <coughs> instruct the superintendent to develop financial alternatives to the current financial formula. That's it. Okay. Do you have a question? Janine? Um, so, this fight, and we're looking for the alternatives for um, of the financial formula in order to find more money for the reconfiguration. Is that correct? The issue is the financial formula book, and we know that once we get that information, it's going to take several years to move into the other, and that's the purpose of doing this, is to get to the point where the administration can look at what it's going to take to move into the revised education process. No, no, what they're trying to do. Well, we can't, we aren't going to add to the formula when we do this. This is a Find out what the, how the formula affects things. By which time the schools would be so small that we could close them anyway. And then have a, a change funding, funding formula. It doesn't make sense. sense. <laughs> to me, it doesn't make sense. Okay, I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Uh, yeah. All opposed? Who opposed? Okay. 
Okay, we should do a roll call vote. It's been requested. Those in favor? Rich? London? Stephanie? <laughs> Nikki? Dick? Jim? Kristen? Pierce? Jerry? Nikki voted in favor. Yep. Those opposed? Janine? Fern? Anybody else? Okay, two to whatever the number is. Any abstentions? Any abstentions? No? I thought everybody voted, so I guess that's it. Linda? Can we make a motion to officially take the implementation thing off the table for the time being for the superintendent? Yeah. Um, to just clear up the workload and make sure that we've got her back. Yep. Is that your motion? Yes, well, second. I mean, the <coughs> second. Anyway. You moved and second. Okay. Yes, thank you. But you so we're going to remove the the uh, implementation projects to the superintendent for the time being. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? One opposed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing. Abstain. 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 Okay. Are we done with this discussion? Now you can go to the implementation committee and subcommittees. We've already done with the that. We're going to it off the table. Food service. Food service discussion. Service committee, unless there's anything else you want to discuss. Final 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 Okay. Fresh fruits and vegetable program. So the question last time um, around fresh fruits and vegetables, you guys decided that you were definitely going to do that at elementary level. Um, and but then there are questions around whether or not you wanted to do it at middle school level and you guys weren't in a place to talk about that. Um, so I just wanted to ask if if that's you know, not this year but if for next year or if it's something that we should even pursue at all. What's the cost? Um, it's, it, it is almost the same cost that we are paying for elementary. For elementary. For elementary. So it doubles the cost. Rich, um, since we're not doing it this year, it's next year. I don't see why it's different than any other piece of the budget. Okay. Talk about it on it. All right. Okay. Everybody happy with that? Yep. Okay. Rich, you're up. I move we accept policy AC, um, non discrimination. Been moved and second to accept policy AC. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any extensions? Okay. I move we accept policy GBJ, personnel records. Been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any extensions? Okay. Go. I move we accept policy JIHB, searches of student automobiles on school property. Second. Been moved and seconded. JIHB. Any discussion? Is, is the is the legal background for that that we treat student automobiles like students' backpacks or jackets? It's a big deal more complicated than that. Yes. Um, In short, yes. No, no. It's a good deal more complicated. It is somewhere between how we treat uh, backpacks and how we treat lockers. Um, we treat lockers as school property that we can examine at our discretion. Sure. Backpacks as needing uh, reasonable suspicion that it's not necessary. So we went back and forth with the administration, the high school administration, and with the legal counsel repeatedly to come up with something that was as respectful of the economy and civil rights as possible while not completely applying a law enforcement standard to school. Okay, so if it looks like a middle ground, yes, it is. Sorry, but we worked on it for six months. Yeah. You satisfied? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Then uh, call for vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any extensions? OK. 
Okay. New business. Uh, we have two first reads. Please get back to us if you have anything that you would like to discuss about them. Except don't get back to us on JLC. I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody get that. If you read the policies that are out there, make sure you get back to Andrew Rich or, or anybody on the policy committee. Next item, budget preparation discussion. Anybody going to do it, that? Jim? Do what? Budget preparation discussion. Why don't we have Kimberly summarize what we what she thinks is going yeah. to do that's probably the best way to do it. So I was asked to, um, and I definitely know it's in front of you, so to speak, there, um, to really look at um, all of the ancillary pieces that are part of the district, um, any programmatic, ex not extras, but add-ons that we do, um, and Prioritize that list. Does that sum it up? And we're going to go through that discussion. <laughs> That's a very good slide summary. <laughs> <laughs> um, he gave me a really long list. So, so when we talked about budget property rights wise, there's still a need to figure out what the budget would look like. Mm -hmm. And everyone's going to all these trainings to see what, how that's changed. We also talked about whether. This, I think, is why we asked for it on that. Uh, I, I, I would still like us to consider, rather than just dropping stuff from our prioritized list of things, mm -hmm. um, because we don't think we can afford them, um, I would like to have us consider placing individual items on our warrant so that the voters can choose to fund them if they are so inclined. And the superintendent rightly pointed out that that's a slightly dangerous approach. Mm -hmm. If one, you better mean it. If it's on the ballot, it's voted down. It's, it's voted down, too, because there's a no means no issue. With where you really can't spend any money on that here. But I just, I know that it's going to be an extremely difficult budget year, and we're going to get this prioritized list, and we've done this before. We go through the list, and we say, we can fund that, we can fund that, we can, and we can't fund that. But unlike some past years, we're getting to the point of over Kind of stuff that is high profile and highly valued, mm -hmm. and I don't know that you just want to whack it out of the budget. Mm -hmm. I think you should give the voters a chance to say we want that program. So, can the expectation in my brain if the voters say yes to it on a Warren article? And it, you don't have to talk about it for at least a decent couple of years, right? They want it, they made it clear they want it, it's going to be included in budget for specials year after year after year. Well, I would think. It could, it could come back down on the war if somebody wanted to do it. You can't dictate that. Somebody could bring it up at this point. To take it off. Take but it off. Take it off. But I guess my point is if, if the voters vote it, if we do this and we go down this rabbit hole, then. Let's listen to them during the next few budget cycles and understand that it is a priority for our community. And we're not going to take it off the budget. What if the vote was by one vote? No. More, more of the fine what if this composition of school board changes. I, I don't yeah. know that we can actually we mind a future school board. Yeah. It would be nice not to have. Ooh, Obviously, the simplest way would be just to in the, in the budget or the budget. <coughs> yeah, we think the voters will approve. But I, I'm just worried that if you like that number, I don't want to name any programs, but you all know what they are. I mean, yep. because we're not at the point where we were in some past years where we're cutting things that don't even that matter a lot, but that people don't uh, are concerned about. I don't want to say don't. They don't have a large public program. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right, you answered my question. It's time for public comment, but uh, well, since I, I see, well, well, I've got one thing too. Hold on. The teacher representative wasn't here when the, when we got to that point. So, Asher, do you have something you want to tell us? Uh, sure. Thanks. 
Uh, open House was a success. NEA and a Chazar Frame Workshop to show members this Friday. And each grade at Antrim Elementary have been hosting family engagement evenings. Topics included math, fact fluency, and reading concepts. Thank you. Okay, now is the time for public comment. Anybody from the public wish to speak to the board? They have an opportunity to do so now. Any for the public uh, wish to speak to the board? Corey? I just have a quick comment that I would just like to remind you all that it, I listened to a long conversation, hour and a half long, hour, about financial issues that um, you guys always are saying that education is at your forefront and that you are also a cooperative district. Just kind of all things to be thinking about with everything that's on the table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Corey, yes, Kevin. Just worrying about football. Sure, go ahead. I mean, recently there was a student who uh, died on the football field. Not our student. Not ours. <laughs> God forbid it would be one of ours. Uh, a high school student was uh, on the football field. Unknown how severe a blow he took, but shortly after he walked off the field, he collapsed and uh, died shortly thereafter. There were a couple other instances that nearly as severe as well. Not of our students. Not of our students. But there is a growing sentiment among a lot of people that this is worth the concussion damage and potential damage to young lives. I just don't know. I don't have students in the program, and I know the program is important to a lot of people, but I do have some concerns that it's also doing a lot of damage to young people. <laughs> Not sure how we should address it. Okay. I think we need to be very careful because we're going to look at concussion and the impact on players. We're talking a lot more than football. Yeah. Oh, perhaps. Than football. Perhaps. Not perhaps. If you look yeah, at. No, no, I don't disagree with you. I understand. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion on that? On that? Seeing none, we will move to uh, approval manifest. I certify that the manifest listed below by number below have been reviewed by me and found to be proper charges against the Kentucky Valley School District for goods and for services received and have been properly processed prior to the submittal to the school board. <coughs> Ooh, we pay the bills. Second. Yeah, we'll second, pay the bills. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Do we have any none? Yes. Uh, what, I'll, all four, five categories, or what do we have? Five categories. Negotiations and information that is rendered in full session. I understand. Okay. Well, we're going to a non-public session for RCA 91-A, column 3, uh, column three Roman numeral 2, the negotiations, and for actions that make the board move.